Hi, I'm Megan from Bibble and Bubble. Um, I've come here today to talk to you about yoga and mindfulness and how this can really help with your mind and body connection and your well-being and feeling good and happy. Hi, I'm Megan from Bibble and Bubble. Um, I'm producing well-being assemblies and resources for schools, focusing on mental health and well-being of your students. So the benefits of introducing yoga and mindfulness into your school environment is it can improve behaviour across all classes and age groups. It raises self-esteem and confidence within your students. It can help children react better in times of stress and anxiety, including exams. And it can also help children to sleep better and to manage um, their emotions which allows them to focus and feel more relaxed within classes. When children are in times of stress and they may be in their, we often talk about fight or flight response, we often will say to a child, breathe. But unless we are giving them the tools to understand what is happening within their body when this flight, fight or flight response happens, we are not teaching children how to breathe correctly and how to use their bodies to regulate their emotions and tap into their rest part of their central nervous system. And this is really key in education settings. When we think about mindfulness, um, particularly with children, it takes practice. It's about children watching adults within their environment um, and picking up the skills of mindfulness. So when we think about breathing, it's a really important factor that we give children the tools to know how to breathe correctly and how when they do breathe correctly, it can help with sport, it can help them feel different, it can help um, with allowing them to feel relaxed and tapping into that parasympathetic nervous system. So a simple technique that we can use is with this technique and sphere. So when we're teaching children to breathe or we're learning about our breath, um, it's really important to allow children to have a focus. So not just to be focused on their breathing, because this can sometimes add to their anxieties, but using something like this sphere can be really helpful in teaching them about how when we breathe in, our lungs expand and how our body moves to allow the oxygen into our body. So what I often say to children is I want them to imagine their favourite food. So as they're breathing in through their nose, they're imagining smelling that food and their lungs are expanding. So we're breathing in, we're breathing in and allowing our tummy to rise like almost a balloon, like this sphere looks like. And as we breathe out, I want them to imagine just blowing out candles on their birthday cake. So they're all positive things that the child can focus on and think about that allow them to feel relaxed, which immediately will help their breathing become calmer and they'll begin to understand how their body works. So again, we're breathing in through our nose, teaching a child that as they breathe in on the shorter breath and exhale, they're breathing out all their birthday candles on their birthday cake which allows them to focus on a longer breath out, which then again taps into that rest area of their central nervous system. We have more than 50,000 thoughts a day. So if you think about that, when you wake up in the morning, you may roll out of bed, you're getting ready for school. All of these things we're doing, from that moment we wake up, we are learning new things, we're having thoughts that are coming into our mind, almost like fish in a fish tank. Our thoughts can swim through our mind and we may not even ever think about them. Or we may catch that thought and listen to it. So when I explain about our 50,000 thoughts and I'm talking to you a little bit about the importance of 
our mind and our body connection and how when our minds are really busy, we can have all our thoughts moving through our mind, a bit like my glitter jar. So I'm going to shake it up and show you. So if we look at all this glitter, how busy our mind is, I'm going to show you the other one as well, lots of different kinds of glitter. You can see that when our mind is busy, sometimes we can feel overwhelmed. Sometimes we can feel that actually we can't take on any more information. And this is why mindfulness is something that a lot of sports people do. A lot of um, professional people in the Olympics. We also find a lot of footballers practice mindfulness and yoga. And we also find that it's used a lot around the world. And that's because when we practice something called mindfulness, it's about allowing all these thoughts that are going through our head all the time to settle. So if we watch this glitter jar, all our thoughts are busy and we can't necessarily focus on a new task, we can't focus on a new thing. But if we watch a bit like our mind, the glitter settle, we can see how we can use our mindfulness and our yoga to allow ourselves to just settle and then we're able to absorb more information, we're able to take on those new challenges and we feel really positive about it. We're just going to do a simple balance, so we're just going to see how this feels for you. So putting all of our weight in our left foot, all four corners of our foot and we're going to bring our hands down to the side focusing on our posture shoulders relaxed and just gently lift one leg up slightly we're going to take it to the side just bring it behind us raise both arms palms together just gently holding this wrist and take a stretch take a nice breath in and as we breathe out bring those arms down to the side and bring that foot back, feeling nice and grounded. So this is a little sequence which you can do, which will help with going to sleep at night, will also help if you feel a bit anxious or a bit nervous about something. So if we just start with our legs crossed and you follow me, we're gonna take our arms out nice and wide, really spread your fingers, take a nice breath in as we breathe out, bring our arms across our body, give ourselves a nice hug, and then gently squeezing down our arms. So now, just follow me. Taking one hand to the floor, and we're gonna lift up through the side of our body and take our arm over and have a nice stretch. We're going to do this twice. And then we'll bring both arms up palms together take another nice breath in as we breathe out just take a twist so we're going to bring our hand to our knee take our fingertips behind and look over our shoulder and then like a rainbow we're going to come all the way up and all the way down again lifting up through our body rather than sinking and focusing on your posture and then we are going to turn to the side. So we're going to bring our arms all the way up and all the way down and gently move ourselves, turning so we're on our mat with our feet planted and our knees bent. Thank you for watching our yoga and mindfulness um, video and I hope you've enjoyed it and picked up some real tips that will help with your well-being and help you to feel happier and more relaxed at school or just 
before going to bed feeling more relaxed. It will improve your sleep, your focus, and just help you feel more regulated and settled. I hope you've enjoyed learning about how yoga and mindfulness can help you feel good, feel happy, and can really look after your well-being and allow you to sleep better, focus better, and enjoy doing all the things you love to do. If you're a parent and you have a child that maybe doesn't want to go to school, has high levels of anxiety, um, refusing to go to school with panic attacks, maybe feeling sick, tummy aches, yoga and mindfulness can be really beneficial, particularly focusing on the relaxation practices, the breathing, also thinking about um, sensory boxes and smells of different scents, things that you can support your child with. But using yoga sequences and breathing can really support your child with better sleep. So if they do um, have autism or ADHD and they struggle with being able to sleep and that has an effect on them going to school and feeling that they can regulate their emotions, then yoga and the relaxation practices can be of great support. If you're looking to include yoga and mindfulness for your provision of with children with special educational needs, we can help you and support you with finding resources that are beneficial to children who find small spaces difficult, find they become overstimulated within the classroom. It's really important to allow children with autism or special educational needs to feel they have some control. We often find that if a child is showing maybe um, disruptive behaviour or argumentative behaviour that we may think they need time out in a small space but actually for a lot of children they feel trapped and so they need space around them to be able to regulate themselves. So if you have an envir environment in school you're thinking about spaces to allow children to regulate themselves. They need to be large spaces or spaces with windows where children can feel that they can escape and they can gain control. For more information on any of our resources, if you're a parent looking for information on how you can support your child to sleep better or regulate their emotions or understand how their bodies work, then please check out our social media, have a look at our YouTube and contact us through our website www.bibblebubble.com or take a look for our links to social media.